Good morning. Welcome to Landmark Missionary Baptist Church. Let's all stand and grab our hymns and turn to 493 and sing glory to his name. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where the cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of life. this morning. like to give the right hand of fellowship when we can. We're glad to have each and every one of our visitors here. Uh, if you're not familiar with our church, we hope that you get familiar with it today and hope you came to receive the word and uh, get the blessing out of the worship service as well. Uh, if you're not familiar with where the restrooms are, they're right out the double back doors up the hallway on your right. Uh, there's also a water fountain up there. And at the conclusion of the worship service, the children's ages, I, two years old to first grade every Sunday. Um, they'll be meeting in the back uh, for Children's Church, so if you have a child that age and you're visiting with us, um, there'll be some uh, adults out there waiting for them as well. Again, are you glad to be here this morning? Yes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take our offering and uh, ask that you, the Lord bless over this and we give what the Lord asks us, okay? Um, at this time, Brother Tad, do you mind leading us in a word of prayer?
next song we're going to do is, we've done it before, and it involves a little participation from the congregation. You're going to repeat what I sing, but I wanted to touch a little base on the song, and God's been called a lot of things. Uh, between the Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Mighty God, He's Lord of everything. He is the Prince of Peace, who is the Lamb, the living God, and you're my saving grace. Do you believe He will reign forever? He's the Ancient of Days. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Most of all, he's my savior, my Messiah, my redeemer and friend. Let's sing, you are holy, and you're going to repeat after me. You are holy. You are holy. You are my. songs. Colossians 3.11 says, Christ is all and is in all. Let's turn to hymn 583 and sing, You Are My All in All. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the
ask that we make our way, our kids, if you're ready for kids' time, make your way to the back as we prepare to sing Sweet View Thy Land. Isaiah 62, 4 says, you will be called Hephzibah and your land Beulah. Let's sing Beulah Land. Heavenly Father, as we bow before you this morning in your presence, we thank you, Lord, for the good music we've heard today that's reminded us just how much you loved us, that you've prepared a place for us. And Father, today as we stand here together, Lord, we just pray that our hearts would be as one, that we would just be knit together. Take your word, uh, just plant it deep in our hearts. May we leave here today saying, truly, it's been good to be in your house. And Father, we pray today that if there would be someone in our midst this morning that's never been saved, that's accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, we pray that today will be that day. We ask you now to forgive our sins. Help us this morning as we look into your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated this morning. It is good to see you in the Lord's house today. And if you have your Bibles, I invite your attention to the book of 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17. Uh, we've been there for the last few weeks. Uh, we're looking at a series of messages uh, in the life of Elijah, the great prophet Elijah. Uh, throughout the whole process, we have seen where God has taken him. Uh, he's training him to be a great prophet of the Lord. And we're taking uh, just little snippets of his life, stories, events that have happened 
uh, in his life and drawing parallel from that. And uh, today we're going to be looking uh, there in chapter 17 again at verses 17 through 24, specifically talking about the subject on the job training. Uh, you know, that's something that I'm sure we're all familiar with. Anytime you get a new job, you may not be familiar uh, with the work that is involved there. There is a court. There is a probation period. There is a time of training uh, for you on that job. Can I submit to you this morning that the Christian life is no different? Uh, actually, our whole life is about training. The Lord is training you and he's training me to get us to the place where he wants us to be. You see, God did not save us to leave us as he found us. Let me say that again. God did not save us in order to leave us where he found us. He saved us in order to change us. That's the whole purpose of him saving us. In fact, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? He's a new creature. All things are uh, passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He saved us to transform us into the very image of his dear son, according to Ephesians chapter 4. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is found in Philippians chapter 1, specifically verse 6, where Paul says these words. He says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. In other words, we, we can be confident. We can be assured that what the Lord has began in us, a good work in us, at the moment of salvation, a good work uh, was given unto us. In fact, the Bible says we are saved unto what? Good works. And so at the moment of salvation, uh, God saved us for a purpose, and he is eventually going to finish. He's going to complete that which he has started. I'm simply saying all that to say this. You and I this morning are always a work in progress. We are always in class. We are always on the job training. And we ought to thank the Lord for that this morning. Now, Elijah has gone through a couple of experiences up to our text today. He's gone through what we refer to as the dry brook training. It was there at the brook Cherith. Uh, where he learned to lean uh, and depend upon the Lord for all of his provisions. He did not depend upon himself. He was simply put in a position where he could just depend on the Lord. As soon as that trial was passed, he found himself at another place by the name of Zarephath, and that's actually where he's at today when we look at our lesson. And, and it was here that he was forced in his life to be sustained by a poor widow. He was not sent there to take care of her. He was sent there for her to take care of his uh, physical provisions in life. And so God is teaching Elijah lessons that can only be learned in no other fashion other than trial and difficulty in his life. You see, he's preparing Elijah for one day soon to stand before him in a very powerful way. By the way, God's training you. He's training me. Uh, he wants us to stand for the Lord. And so we'll go through all types of training in our life. Sometimes that training is classroom training. Uh, you know, where everything's comfortable, the temperature's nice, everything works out well. Sometimes that training is in the wilderness. Sometimes it's training that, that, that we really didn't, you know, ask to sign up for, but I'm telling you, God is taking you uh, through a journey in life. And so our text today, we find Elijah in another difficult trial of faith. So we're going to pick up with uh, 1 Kings chapter 17, beginning in verse 17. It says, and it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom. And carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come unto him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. I, I underlined that phrase. In my Bible, I love that phrase. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. 
And the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child, brought him down out of the chamber into the house, delivered him unto his mother, and Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is truth. That's in thy mouth is truth. Truth, And so what we see here today is Elijah facing another difficult trial of faith. Uh, actually, what we're confronted with as we look at this text basically is two things, tragedy and triumph. Tragedy and triumph is what we find in our lesson today. And Elijah is going to learn some very valuable lessons, and I hope and pray that you and I will learn some very valuable lessons as we look into this age-old event. Three things I want to bring to your attention this morning as we look at this topic, talking about on-the-job training. Remember, all of this series in Elijah basically is to accomplish this, to get you to a place in life where God can use you. That's what he's wanting to do. He's wanting to get you into a place in your Christian life where he can use you. Three things I want you to see. Number one, I want you to see an unexpected tragedy. An unexpected tragedy. There was a tragic event that happened uh, in the house of this widow. By the way, I mean, isn't that the way tragedy works? Usually when tragedy hits, it's unexpected, right? It was something that we were not preparing for. It, it, it was something that, you know, we just had no idea was coming. It's soon. It's sudden. It caught us off guard. That's what tragedy does, and that's what it accomplishes in our life. You say, well, what was this tragedy, Brother Brian? Well, look again at verse 17. It came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. His sickness was so bad, it was so sore that there was no breath in him. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto my uh, art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? So what we see in this unexpected tragedy, first of all, is the death of a child. The death of a child. You see, this boy, and think about this for a moment. This boy, along with his mother, along with Elijah, has been fed up to this point by divine providence, hadn't they? You remember their story? When Elijah came to them there in the city, the woman was gathering, the Bible says, two sticks. She only had a handful of meal and just a little bit of oil in a cruise, and they were getting ready to prepare their very last meal, and it was after this, they were going to die. She had nothing. She was a widow. She was poor. There's a drought in the land. She was in dire straits. And then Elijah came, and he told her, he said, hey, <laughs> Before you make your last meal for you and your son, would you make me one? Uh, you remember that study last week? And she did. And you know what happened as the result of all of that? Every day when she went out to the barrel, there was a little bit of meal. And there was, every day there was a little bit of oil in the cruise. And God sustained this family day in and day out. And it was right here in the midst of divine providence that automatically, soon, suddenly, a child died. I don't know about you, but that, that must have seemed like a great contradiction to that widow. Probably seemed like a great contradiction to Elijah. You know, we're, we're not told all the thoughts and what they're thinking here. We were told a few things that the woman said to Elijah. But, but, but as you look at this, I, I thought you was a man of God. I, I thought God was providing for us. I, I thought his will was being done, that, 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 that you're here. And all of a sudden, a child dies. And can I tell you, this child died right in the middle of them being in the center of the will of God. A tragic event happens. Well, there's a great reminder here for all of us. God's ways don't always make sense from a human perspective. <laughs> amen? Can I hear amen on that? God's ways does not always make sense from a human perspective, and there's a reason for that. The Bible tells us, God specifically tells us, that His ways are what? Not our ways. His thoughts are are not our thoughts. As high as the heavens is above the earth, so far removed and high as His ways above our ways. And so many times in life, from a human perspective, God doesn't make sense in our life. You ever been there? Yeah. 
We can all raise our hand, share our story. I can tell you about this time. I remember this time. I thought I was doing exactly what God wanted me to do. And this tragic thing happened in my life. Oftentimes, God does things that we think, we think is contradictory. Right? Oftentimes, God does things that we think is unusual. But can I tell you, when God does something, it's always with a divine purpose. There's always, a de- whether you realize it, whether you understand it today or ever, I'm telling you, when God moves, he always moves with purpose. And so in this unexpected tragedy, we see a child's death. Not only do we see a child's death, but we also see a parent's devastation. Do you see what that woman said to Elijah? Would you look again at verse 18? It says, and she said unto Elijah, what have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? You see, that's sarcastic. sarcastic. Uh, th- th- that was meant to be a knife in the heart of Elijah. Well, what have I to do with you, Elijah, O thou man of God? Do you see what's at stake here? She said, are you come to call unto to me my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? You see, apparently, according to the Bible, this was the only son she had. She was a widow. She was poor. And if something happened to the son, who was going to provide for her? That This was a major, major dilemma in her life. And no doubt she was looking to the day when he would arrive at manhood and provide for her upkeep. That's what she was training him for. She probably expected to be with her son for many years to come. Isn't that the way we look at it? Isn't that the way we look at life? I mean, children should not die before their parents, right? I mean, really, I mean, that child uh, should, be a, should be coming to my funeral, not the other way around. That's how we view life. Now her dreams are shattered. Now this woman is devastated. Now she is grief-stricken. Her heart's broken. Her world comes tumbling down. You ever been there? Ever been there? And now... She does what so many people do in a situation like this. She's placing blame everywhere. (laughs) You see what's going on in her life? She's putting the blame everywhere. She blames Elijah for bringing the judgment of God into her home. Oh, wait a minute. I thought Elijah was sent to help her. Oh, he was. But what is she doing? She says she's blaming him now. Oh, thou man of God. What have I to do with you? Have you come here to call my sin to remembrance? And we're not told what this sin may be. But but folks, you got to understand, she's she's delirious. She's she's bringing up every bad thing she might have done in the past. Say, saying, well, you know, God's bringing judgment upon me because of this. And if I wouldn't have done this in my life, this wouldn't have happened. And, and, And she's going off the deep end. She's blaming her past sins for the trouble that she's having. By the way, you ever been there in life? Do you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever watched everything that you have worked for? Everything that you have loved come crumbling down around you? You ever been there in that place? Do you remember how that felt? I'm telling you, friend, that is a difficult place to be in life. When everything comes crashing down around you, she's placing blame on anybody and everybody But let me tell you this this morning. When the Lord has brought you low, learn early to look to Him. Can I say that again? When the Lord has brought you low, learn early to look to Him and only Him. You see, this widow thought she was passing through a storm of correction. She thought God was hurting her. What she needed to see was that she was actually in a storm of perfection and that God was helping her. You say, what? That's not how I see it. It doesn't matter. Remember, our ways are not his ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. Uh, Many times we're this way too. We miss the help that God is trying to give us while we focus on the hurt that we feel in our hearts. And by the way, can you imagine what kind of effect this much had on Elijah? I mean, he's just simply doing what God said do. Go here, okay. Eat this, okay. Drink this, okay. Now go here, okay. And and this woman's going to take care of you, okay. I mean, up to this point, Elijah's had to do nothing but just simply do what God said do. 
right? I mean, he, he's never had to get involved with anything until this trial, this trial. Well, I mean, this must have had a huge effect on Elijah. Uh, I, I mean, up to this point, he had seen God do the impossible, right? I mean, he had witnessed the provisions of God. Now this woman's son is dead, and she starts pointing the finger of accusation at Elijah. Can you imagine how Elijah must have felt? I mean, it must have been a a very discouraging day for the child of God. By the way, discouragement is a tremendous tool in the hand of the devil. It is a tremendous tool in the hand of the devil. I'm telling you, our enemy is working day in and day out to get you discouraged. Because once he gets you discouraged, do you know where he has you? He has you right where he wants you. You see, a a discouraged child of God is just that. They're discouraged. They're so focused on the events that's going on around their little life here, they can't get their eyes off their circumstances. They're discouraged, so they're not going to be gaining any ground. In fact, they'll be moving backwards spiritually. And that's exactly where the devil wants to get you today. And so when we become discouraged, we begin to wonder why. We begin to question God. That's what this woman's doing. Her life is falling apart around her. So we see an unexpected tragedy. Secondly, I'm glad the story doesn't end here, (laughs) aren't you? Secondly, not, not only do we see an unexpected tragedy, which we often face in life too, by the way, but we also see an undeniable request. An un... Well, let me say it this way. Unbelievable request. Elijah's gonna ask for something here that no one in the Bible's ever asked for up to this point. Not one person. And I want you to see what it was. And, 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 and notice, notice in, th- this, is, this is awesome. Look at verse 19. 19. And he said unto her, remember now, the finger's in his face. She's pointing accusations. She's accusing him. And notice what he says. He says, give me thy son. Just, just give me your son. And the Bible says, he took her out of her bosom. That tells me that she just didn't say here that he had to reach and take the child out of her bosom. And he goes up to the loft where his room was. He shuts the door. He lays the child down on the bed, on his bed that he'd been sleeping in. And notice here in verse 19 or verse 20, it says, and he cried unto the Lord. I'm sure he did. I mean, here's a man that doesn't understand what's going on either. And it says, he cried unto the Lord and he said, oh Lord, my God, thou, he says, hast thou also brought evil upon this widow with whom I sojourned by, by slaying her son? God, I don't understand. You, you, told me to, you told me to come here. This woman was going to sustain me and everything's going well. And, and now are you bringing evil to this house by, by taking her son? Notice it says in verse 21 that he stretched himself three times over this child and he cried unto God. And here's what he said, oh, Lord God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come unto him again. And notice, and the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. Let me ask you something. Does he hear you? Well, I I, I hope. Does he hear you when you pray? It says, and the soul of the child came unto him again, and he revived And Elijah took the child. Can you imagine this now? He took the child. He brought him down out of the chamber into the house. He delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, see, your son liveth. Your son lives. An unbelievable request. As I said earlier, up to this point, Elijah hasn't had to do much. He he just simply moved when God said move. He, He stayed when God said stay. He ate and drank and whatever as God said so. All Elijah has done basically is watch God do the impossible time after time after time in his life. But now he's in a a position where, where he must get personally involved in what the Lord's doing. He had to get, you see how God's training him? You see, you see where God's bringing him up to this point? It was Elijah, sit back and watch. <laughs> sit back and watch. Now it's Elijah, you're going to have to get involved a little bit. 
And he did, you know. And he's praying. He, and he doesn't know. But one thing that strikes me as I look at this, this passage here, I, I see how calm that he was with this lady. You know, even though he's facing death, even though he's faking, uh, facing accusations, he's calm. He doesn't get upset. He doesn't attack back. She's accusing him, oh, thou man of God, you come here to, you know, to recall my sins. He, did, he didn't lash back. He, he doesn't lash out. He doesn't try to defend himself. No, 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 no. Boy, what a great lesson for us. Do you know what happens many times when we face the storms of life? I'll tell you, we fall apart. We simply lose it. We fall apart. That's not a time to lose it. That, that's a time to have faith in God. Oh, my goodness, folks, many times when we face the storms of life and we began to fall apart, we began to worry, we began to wonder why, we began to ask all these questions. Listen, you need to learn to calmly take your burdens to the Lord. Calmly. We also see his compassion. You see, Elijah's heart has been touched by the pain of this woman and what she's experiencing. Uh, notice, notice what he's seen in her up to this point. He's watched her grow in her faith. That's an amazing thing to watch. He, he experienced her generosity. He, he's experienced her hospitality. And, and, and so he's watching her grow. His heart is moved at her need. His compassion is seen in, in, in his prayer. You see that in verse 20. Basically what he's doing, he's doing what the Bible says do. He is bearing the widow's burden in the presence of God. Galatians 6.1 tells us that. Bear ye one another's burdens... And so fulfill the law of Christ. Bear one another's burdens. You, you see, he, he's getting under that burden with that lady. And he's, he's taking that burden to the Lord. And he's just pouring it out. He lays the child on the bed. He stretches himself out over that child. Three times, the Bible says, he stretches himself out. Uh, Lord God, why have you brought evil to this family? We see his prayer. And then Elijah asked God to do something that had never been done before. I want you to think about that. Elijah asked God to do something that never, there's no record of any dead person being brought back to life up to this point in the Bible. Not one. The faith this man must have had in God. You want to know why Elijah is mentioned so many times in the Bible? <laughs> I believe a lot of it has to do right here. Right here where we are. God, I need you to do something that only you can do. God, would you put the life back into this child? C can you imagine this prayer? You see, the Bible says that the, that the Lord God heard the voice of Elijah. He heard his voice. It, it's an amazing prayer. By the way, one of the surest and quickest ways for us to get our needs met is to stop worrying about our needs and find somebody else who has a need and get under that burden with them. You see, that's what the Christian life is all about. That's why a lot of people aren't, aren't content and satisfied in the Christian life because they're all worried about their own little needs. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what you do. You find somebody else. You look around who has a burden, a tragedy, uh, whatever, and you get under that burden with them. You'll forget all about your needs. And that's what Elijah's doing right here in this passage. Verse 22 and verse 23 tells us the triumphant news that Elijah received, the object of his faith. Here's a man that watched God do the impossible. God, would you please put the life back into this child? Can you imagine when that, that breath come back into that child? Can, can, can you imagine what that did to Elijah? Elijah. You know, a lot of commentators, you got to be careful who you, who you read after. S some will have you to believe the child really wasn't dead. It was just so sick that it just wasn't breathing a lot, you know. And I, let me tell you something. The child was dead. <laughs> the child was dead. And so he asked God to bring life back into the child, and he did. You see, God honored the faith of Elijah, and he raised the child to life. You say, why is that, Brother Brian? Because Elijah trusted God by faith. That's why. He, he trusted God by faith. The Bible tells us in 1 John 5 that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Faith is so important. 
And he presented the proof to the lady. Oh, I love this. <laughs> when Elijah, think about it now, when Elijah went up those stairs, he had a dead boy in his arms. He didn't know what the outcome was going to be, but he trusted God with the outcome. When he went up there, he had a dead young boy in his arms. But can I tell you, when he came down the stairs, he had a living boy in his arms. It's an amazing thing. What a glad day that must have been. When God, elim- think, think about it now, when God eliminated the problem by his power. Do you believe God's still able to do that? Is he still able to eliminate our problems with his power? You better believe it. If not, why are we here? <laughs> I mean, really, if God can't do, and folks, listen, one thing about Elijah, he asked God for big things. I believe a lot of times in life that that's where we fail. We limit God. We try, we too, by the little things that we ask. Folks, I'm going to tell you, we serve a big God that can do big things in your life. And and, and Elijah, there was no limits. (laughs) Hey, there's nothing any bigger than bring this child back to life. And he did. He didn't mind asking God for big things. You see, the Bible says that God can do... (laughs) Exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or even think. Think about that. God's bigger than that. Don't put God in your little box. Don't be guilty of putting God in a box. Folks, there's not a box in the world that can contain our God. And so, hey, there's nothing wrong with asking big things. Hey, when you've got a big faith, you can ask big things of a big God. So, It was faith that moved that mountain of Elijah. And I'll tell you this morning, it's faith that'll move the mountain that's facing you today. It's faith. So we see an unbelievable request. God bring life back to this child. He takes this child down. He he delivers this child to the mother. Notice the Bible says, he says, see? (laughs) See? Your child lives. Your child lives. Oh my goodness. That leads us to the last point this morning. There's an undeniable result. There's an undeniable result. You say, what is the result of this? Well, I I want you to look at this. First of all, notice, you might want to circle verse 24, highlight it. To all of this, this is the conclusion of this little story. And the woman said to Elijah, now by this I know that thou art a man of God. And... That the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. Now I want you to see the result of what this, was, what this accomplished. Number one, the prophet was vindicated. The, the man of God was vindicated before this woman. You see, she expresses her firm confidence that Elijah is who he claimed to be. A man of God. A prophet of God. Folks, listen. True faith in God will always be vindicated. True faith in God will always be vindicated. But not only was the prophet vindicated, but God's word was validated. Do you see what she says? The last thing in verse 24, and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. The man of God was vindicated and the word of God was validated. Can I tell you this morning, that is the purpose all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Every time there's a miracle that occurs, it is always for the reason to vindicate the man of God and to validate the word of God. That's what a biblical miracle always accomplishes. You see, in biblical days, they didn't have the completed revelation of the Word of God. They couldn't go, hey, turn over to the book of, of, you know, over to the book of 1 Kings or over to the book of Revelation or Matthew. They couldn't say that. They didn't have the completed Word of God. God would send a prophet, a messenger in with a prophecy, and, and, and then he would affirm that prophecy with divine power, and the people would look and say, that's a man of God, that's the Word of God. That's the whole purpose for a miracle. An undeniable result. She expresses her confidence in the word of God. She understands that God possesses all power now. (laughs) All power in heaven and earth. She gets it now. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is meant to increase our faith. 
If God has given his word in a matter, then you can rest assured that he will see to it that his word is kept to the letter. That's an amazing promise. In the end, God's plan was accomplished. And look at the result. I mean, the prophet was vindicated. The the word of God was validated. And in that, this widow is encouraged, right? Hey, she can believe God for anything now. I've seen what he did with a handful of meal and a little bit of oil day after day after day. Now I've seen what he can do in a life. Yeah, hey, I can believe God for anything now. Is that where you are this morning? Can you believe God for anything? You say, oh, I I have people in my mind. I I, I wish God would just raise them back, you know. We, We look at this miracle here. Well, can I tell you something? If that person knows the Lord Jesus as their Savior one day, that's going to become a reality. He is going to raise them from the dead. And and their faith will become sight in the Lord. I'm telling you folks, if God says it, it'll happen. You don't don't have to worry about it. You you really don't have to worry. This woman is encouraged and, and God wants us to cling to his word. That's the place where God wants to bring you. The same place where he brought the widow. The same place where he brings Elijah. That you can get to the place where you can say, I believe God for anything now. Is that where you are? This widow's encouraged. Also, the prophet is enabled. (laughs) You see, Elijah's now ready for the battles that lay ahead. God, God has put him in a school and placed him in several impossible situations. And every time, God has proven to be greater than any problem that they face. That's where he wants to bring you. That's where he wants to bring me. You see, Elijah has arrived at the place where he's ready to be used of the Lord now. By the way, that's the whole whole purpose of this series, getting to the place where God can use you. There's nothing he can't face now. And oh, when we get to chapter 18, you're going to see why Elijah was put through some of the things he was put through. When he stands there on Mount Carmel that day in front of God and everybody else and God wins a great victory (laughs) over idolatry, it's an amazing, amazing thing that's accomplished there. You see, folks, God's method of growing us is not always pleasant. God's method of growing you and training you is not always fun. Can I hear amen? It's not always fun. Fun. However, it's essential that we pass through the growing process so that we can be better used of the Lord. That's what Elijah's life's all about. Let me ask you this morning. Are you facing situations today, right now, right here, this time? Are you facing situations today that seem to be, seem to be impossible to you? impossible for you has it dawned on you yet that you're not there by accident you know a lot a lot of times we we throw that word out well that's just a coincidence (laughs) you know there's a few words that christians ought to exempt from their vocabulary and coincidence is one of them there's no coincidence in life um Not at all. Not at all. This is not a coincidence. Oh, that just happened. No, that just doesn't happen. (laughs) You know what I mean? We serve a God that moves with purpose. Fate, luck, chance, coincidence, all of that ought to be exempt out of our vocabulary. We serve a God that moves with purpose in our life. You say, I'm in a tough place. I'm in an impossible place. You're not there by accident. Can I tell you, you're not there by accident. Have you come to realize that nothing can happen to you that isn't first approved by God? It's an amazing thing if we'll ever wrap our finite brains around trials and difficulties and tragedies in life. Oh, it hurts. It's real. Believe me, it's real. But there's a divine purpose behind it all. If we could ever understand that when we have taken the first step toward victory over that situation. You know, here's what this story teaches us. 
Bring your burden to the Lord. Somebody ought to write a song about that. Amen? They already have. Bring your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Simply leave it there. You see, she brought her burden to Elijah. Elijah took her burden and went up and laid it before the Lord. What do you do with burdens? You take it to the Lord. That's what, that's what we do with our burdens. Oh, just like the widow, just like Elijah. And can I tell you this morning, God will help you, but listen, you've got to trust him by faith. Jesus said, Matthew 11, verse 28, he said, Come unto me, all ye that, what, are heavy laden. <laughs> he says, and I'll give you what? Rest. Is that what you need today? Rest. Spiritual rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. That's what we're doing. Learning his ways. He said, my yoke is easy. My burden's light. You say, well, preacher, my, my yoke's not easy. My burden's not light. You want to know why that is? You're yoked to the wrong thing. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My burden's light. That's what he promises. And he'll help you with any situation. But folks, you've got to have first that relationship with the Lord Jesus. I'm going to ask you this morning, do you know him? I, I'm not asking you, do you know about him? But do you know him? personally do you have a relationship with God through the son of God Jesus Christ this morning faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God that's what he is designed to do if not today if you'll repent of your sin trust the Lord Jesus put your faith in him he'll save you and you'll be eternally saved isn't that good news it can happen today. Let's stand together. We're going to have a verse of invitation this morning. If you need to come, you come as we sing. Let's pray first. Father, thank you again for your word. Oh, how we love it. Help us to live it. Help us to learn it. Lord, we thank you for the promises that are in your word. And Lord, like Elijah many times, we're just in positions we don't know. <laughs> but Lord, help us to put all of our faith in you and trust in you. Get us to the place where you can use us mightily in life. We'll give you glory in Jesus' name.